Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today you are joining me on a brand new video. We are talking about eight simple ways to make your bookshelf styling look more expensive. We're not just talking about books today, whether you're displaying a collection of trinkets, souvenirs, photography, or even artwork alongside those books, here are my top eight tips for making your bookshelves look more cohesive and stylish. Now your end goal might not be to make your bookshelf look more expensive. You might want it to look more curated, more collected, more stylish, cohesive, chic, clean, tidy. Whatever your goal is with all of those shelves, I find that having a system in place really keeps you in check. These tips are not only super simple and very functional, but I promise you they won't cost you a thing. Think about using everything that you currently have in your home, maybe in storage somewhere, maybe hidden in your garage. Before you run out and buy anything on this list, definitely shop your home first. I can almost guarantee that you probably have a treasure trove of items already in your home that you could use for your bookshelf styling. So without further ado, let's get into my number one tip. My first tip, is to start with the basics and take inventory. Spread out all of the books that you have and group them according to size or color. Taking inventory is always the first most essential step when designing pretty much any space in your home. You need to first figure out how many books you're trying to display and in what order you're going to group them. You'll want to fill up your cubbies and open shelves according to the size of the piece. If you have a larger cubby in one area and smaller, shorter ones in the next area, you'll want to group your books according to size. This will ensure that they're scaled proportionally to the shelf that they're sitting on. You can also group your books and magazines according to color. This is not a necessary step, but if your books have a lot of color like mine do, you might want to consider displaying the ones with light colors together. In my living room, I have two identical IKEA Expedit shelves right next to each other. They're flanking my TV console, so they create this really large focal point in my living room. I love this look because not only does it expand the visual weight of the room, and it actually makes my small living room look even wider and longer, but I love that it creates balance and symmetry. On the living room side, I consider the adult side. It's a really curated mix of books, magazines, plants, a lot of my little trinkets, but it's mostly a monochromatic color story. Whereas on the kids' side, the bookshelf actually doubles as a toy storage as well. Since the kids' toys are really colorful, I really wanted to lean into that rainbow kind of chromatic aspect of this bookshelf and color coordinate my book spines and my magazines alongside the kids' toys. This creates a really high contrast visual aspect where the kids' zone is really colorful and then you have the adult lounging side which is a little bit more black and white with pops of green. The next tip to make your bookshelf styling look more expensive is to vary the orientation of the books. We're talking about stacking the books in both vertical and horizontal orientation. You're not simply trying to copy what the magazines do. There is a function to having the books both vertical and horizontal. You might have really short bookshelves and really tall books. In this case, you might want to keep the smaller books stacked on the vertical and then lay down your larger books. Varying the orientation on the exact same shelf with vertical books and horizontal books is really what's going to create that visual impact and make the bookshelf look more dynamic. There's really no right and wrong way to display your books. For me, it's all about creating these really little moments, these simple vignettes. Think about alternating the placement of your books from shelf to shelf. If the top shelf has something vertical and horizontal, the shelf right underneath it could start with horizontal and then become vertical. You can stagger the orientation from shelf to shelf. You can place all vertical books on one shelf, all horizontal books on the next. Mix and match the placement of your books and have fun with it. Once you have all those books laid out, the next tip is to add in another collection. You can try a collection of blue and white ginger jars for a contrasting color. You can try a collection of personal photography framed in coordinating frames. I would stick to two or three additional elements if you're displaying collections alongside the books. You might try a collection of bowls and vessels in varying heights. Bowls are not only stylish, they can also be highly functional too and hold smaller items like remote controls if this bookshelf is in the media room. The bowls can also hold matches if you burn candles nearby. I have sage in my bookshelf bowls, I have coins, I have toys. Think about a repetition of elements and adding in another collection that shares your personality or the story of your home and life. 
Tip number four is to hang them high. Use the back of the bookshelf to mount additional artwork, photography, or even sculptural items. Think about using all the interior sides of the bookshelf to free up the surface space. If you have an open bookshelf, you can use the back of the wall to install your additional items. If you have a closed bookshelf, which means the bookshelf has a bottom, it has sides, and it has a backing, then you would use the backing and the sides to create more of a three-dimensional collection. You can think about isolating a single cubby. You can think about highlighting a feature shelf. Hanging additional elements on the back of the bookshelf feels very designer chic, and it almost adds a very unexpected, unique surprise. Speaking of the back of the shelves, you can also add visual interest by adding temporary peel and stick wallpaper, textured wallpaper like grass cloth, even pattern or printed paper, beadboard, bamboo, or even rope. Think about any color, pattern, print, or material to line the back of your bookshelf with to create a really beautiful backdrop for your books and collection. A key designer's tip is to keep it simple. Let it be about the background only. You don't want the background to be too busy since your collection of books and personal items are the star of the show. The next tip is to finish with some greenery. There's no room in the house and a bookshelf for that matter that can't benefit from some bright indoor plants. We're talking about colorful flowers, big huge blooms, indoor potted plants. Consider the size and the scale of your bookshelf and style accordingly. When your bookshelf is filled with all of those hard lines of the books or your magazines, all of those right angles of your frame photography, or even those hard surfaces of your vases and vessels, what you're trying to achieve with all of those indoor potted plants is to soften up the lines a little bit. You can place the plants alongside your books and your personal collection. Think about alternating the rows that the plants sit on. If you have room for it, you can add a small little plant on every single shelf, or you can be a little bit more strategic and place them at eye level or below. That also makes watering the plants so much easier. If you don't have a green thumb, faux plants can work just as fine in a bookshelf. Invest a little more in those faux plants so they look more realistic. Make sure you stay away from plastic looking faux plants. Invest in the silk variety if you're going to go faux. The next tip is to light it up. I love layers of light all throughout the house and the bookshelf is no exception. It's the perfect spot in your home to install symmetrical wall sconces on top of the shelf. You can even install strategic picture lights to light up all that beautiful artwork. Why not try those teeny tiny lamps from my design trends video that are so hot this year. If you don't have a plug or an outlet nearby for these new lights, don't worry, I've got you covered. Make sure you catch last week's video on rental-friendly ways to light your home without the need for plugs or hard wiring. I share my favorite ways for you to light up your home. I'll link that video for you here and you can also find shoppable links in the description box. You can also use flameless rechargeable candle lights or even pillar candles in hurricanes alongside your books. And the final most important way for you to make your bookshelf styling look more expensive is to give it some breathing room. We're talking about the great edit. Whatever you do, don't fill it up. You wanna leave a lot of room for negative space and a chance for the books and your eyes to breathe. Think of it like shopping at a store. No one likes racks of clothes filled to the brim. It doesn't allow you to sift through the items with ease. You need room to breathe, room to experiment, and room for the bookshelf to grow. That's it for today's video. What did you think of my eight tips to make your bookshelf styling look more expensive? Now, are there any hard set rules when it comes to bookshelf or shelfie styling? Absolutely not. Consider your shelfie your own personal laboratory. I'm looking at my home right now and I have so many bookshelves in my home. What I lack in storage and built-in cabinetry, I actually make up for in freestanding furniture with a whole lot of shelves. Not only do I have a lot of books and a lot of magazines that I constantly refer back to, I love to display my personal items, my photographs, all of my souvenirs, my dog's ashes even in my dining room cabinet. There are so many ways to tell the story of my family and our lifestyle through our collections and our shelfies. I might not have a whole lot of rules when it comes to bookshelf styling, but I do have one huge pet peeve. It's when people style their bookshelves with all of the books flipped over so you don't see the binding and you only see the pages. 
I hate that. Not only is it not functional, I mean, how are you even gonna find your books? But I absolutely understand why people do it with my experience in production. The reason why we flipped all of these books over in production is simply because we didn't have the rights to it. You have to have the rights to the artwork or the title when you're showing anything on camera, especially for commercial purposes. So if you're not in production and you're not filming your bookshelf or your home for commercial purposes, there is no reason that you should be displaying your books with the page side in front. So while there's a whole lot of do's, that is my one major don't. If you like this type of content and you want more how to's on this channel, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know if you have any tips and tricks that you can share with our audience about your own bookshelf styling. Share this video with anyone you know who's looking to elevate their shelfie game. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop every single Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.